Ricky over at Irie Fix Diecasts has invited the community to join him in celebrating Jamaican Independence Day. The only rules for the Invitational is to customize a die cast using two colors from the Jamaican flag. I chose this Matchbox Fandango Super GT version for this build. Uh, this was originally produced as a super fast version from 75 to 1981, and it had a spinning fan blade actually there at the back. The Super GT version came out in 86, ran through 1988. This one's from 1988, and it didn't have the spinning fan in the back. It just had that little tampo or decal back there. I tried to recreate that in the back on this build. I did not redo this front decal because it kind of looks like a tongue out front to me. So I sure didn't want to do that. So first things first, drilled it apart and a uh, metal body, plastic base. It has the kind of like spring suspension in there, which on this, you can see it's just a front post and the tail lights hook in the back. But man, that little spring suspension is super rusty, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> needed to be cleaned up badly. And I wanted to make sure I didn't cut myself on that stupid thing. The glass is not transparent. It's just black. Um, but it was held into the top by a small post. So I had to drill that out. So when it comes to colors on this, one of the colors need one of the colors on the flag is black. So I thought, well, the glass is black, and I'm going to do the decal for the back in black. So that takes care of that. And I actually end up throwing a little decal up there on the front grill as well. For gold, yellow or gold, and I went with gold. I went with those Samed wheels that you see there. They were the perfect size for this. I had to cut the little plastic hub from the back of the rear tires to get it to fit. There you can see I took that spring thing to a wire wheel for quite a while to clean it up. I pressed that into place to hold the wheels, but then I did hold that down with some super glue later. I had polished up the body or at least, you know, gone over it with a wire, wire wheel at this point uh, after stripping it. The wheels fit really well. I like the look of it. And so all systems were go. <laughs> um, I did use the silver Sharpie on the taillights um, as a base coat on the taillights. I did not do the rear pipes that you see there because they're really tiny and they're really kind of funky on this casting. I didn't think they'd turn out well painting them. So then over the silver Sharpie, I went with the uh, Tamiya Clear Red. And that always works really well. It just gives the taillights a great look. And it couldn't be any simpler than this. I mean, the silver Sharpie is a really good base coat under this. Uh, some people use the Molotow pin. You know, some people do different things. For me, the Sharpie always seems to work out well. Um, ah, the body. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I end up filing this one quite a bit. It wasn't in terrible shape. And what you're seeing here is sped up. I think it was five times real speed. So it looks, it actually looks kind of cool in the video. Like I'm just sliding the file along, but that's five times speed. So, uh, it, it's going back and forth quite a bit in between there. Uh, got it where I thought it needed to be and then hit it with a dupe color primer just to see if there was anything else that needed work. Uh, oh, I also, when I drilled this out, that front post is pretty short and so I did not tap it. I used a self-tapping 256 screw for up there. And uh, then I cleaned the body off and I hit it with the dupe color primer. And... Uh, when it came to choice of colors for this, I didn't have much in the way of green. <laughs> um, there you see the primer coat, and there were some areas I needed to clean up a little bit more. Um, yeah, I didn't have much, so 
And I didn't go with lime ice because I just used that on another build. So you'll find out here in a minute. Flitz on the windshield to clean it up. This is that uh, softer plastic. I did not want to try sanding it because it's one of those, it, it wasn't that bad in the first place. Uh, secondly, I know if I sand this, it's gonna get weird. It's gonna get that odd stringy kind of feel to it. And so just polishing it up was fine. Then it was time for gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. Dunk it in there to get a nice shiny clear coat on it. And that's all the glass really needed. You know, does it end up being perfect? No. Is it close to perfect? Eh, close enough. <laughs> Yeah, you dip it in the gauzy and then you wick away all the excess here with a paper towel. And uh, once you have that all done, and, and on something like this, there's not a lot to wick away because of the shape of it. It worked out pretty well. And then you just cover it and let it dry. I always let these things just dry overnight. Typically, it seems like when I've checked on them, they're pretty well done in you know, like a few hours. I did have to custom design that decal for the back. And so this took me a little while, but I was playing around and, you know, I don't design enough decals. And so this was fun and interesting just to do one stupid single decal for the back. And uh, there you see it. I painted it with uh, <laughs> Model Master Crabber Green. That was the green I had. You know, it was either that or lime ice. I was out of the uh, metal cast green. You know, I didn't have anything else, more of a regular green. So this is pretty bold. <laughs> but at the same time, I kind of like it. I, I, it kind of fits this casting, I think, pretty well. I was thrilled with that decal because it's a very simple design and because the fan was cast on the back, I was able to measure what was there and make something pretty exact. Uh, so at this point, it's just time to attach the windshield. For that, I used the Bondic resin pin. I didn't want to mess with CA glue on this. I thought, I'll just use the resin. It will hold well. And so you just put a little of the resin there on the post, a little around it to make kind of a little cap, and then the UV light on the resin pin cures that resin. And it, it does it really quickly. And that's all it takes. And at that point, we're ready to reassemble it. Again, those taillights come through the back. It hooks on there. That uh, front grill, uh, that wasn't like a custom decal for that. All that is is a stripe, a very narrow black stripe that uh, worked out pretty well putting that down and then using the uh, micro set, micro saw, micro set, micro saw. I can never keep them, keep track of which one's which. The micro saw really sucked it down into the pattern on the grill. So that worked pretty well and uh, rolls like a champ. So there's where we started. Yeah, pretty well play worn little uh, matchbox fandango super gt version and again I, one and, and probably now you'll never be able to look at this thing the same without thinking that front looks like a tongue sticking out I, i'm sorry if i ruined that for you but that's what it looks like to me and i just didn't i didn't like the front pattern so i didn't want to try and recreate that i thought i'd just leave that front blank and i thought about putting the stripe and then i thought no that would uh, clash with the fan in the back and Anyhow, here's where we ended up. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you like it too. Uh, everybody check out Ricky's channel over at iRefix Diecast. And uh, he's going to be doing a recap video is my understanding for this build. Check out everybody else participating in the event. And I'm looking, to see, looking forward to seeing what people come up with. There are some glamour shots. Oh, there are links in the description as well to uh, Ricky's YouTube page. Um, there are some glamour shots coming up here in a few seconds. Thank you for watching these videos. Um, everybody stay safe and healthy out there. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.